G'day, guys. Thanks for listening to the Noob Spiro podcast today and joining the illustrious Turbo and I in studio. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to save money on spearfishing equipment. When I want to buy a spear gun, there's nothing I like better than saving $20. That's right. You can use the code Noob Spiro at spearfishing.com.au to save $20 on all purchases over $200. That goes along with cheap shipping worldwide and a 90 day no hassles returns policy. You can also visit Adreno in their physical stores in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Check out a huge range of equipment and get advice from more than 60 underwater equipment experts. Today's Noob Spirit podcast is also proudly brought to you in partnership with PenetratorFins.com. Get on there, guys. Have a look at some of the designs they've got. They've got clears. The blacks are beautiful. Check out the Noob Spiro custom Oki print. It's mad as well. Larry's got a full range of wicker designs, and he's got beautiful finish on his fins. He's uh, recently updated his manufacturing process. It's even better than it was before. He makes some of the best fins in the world. Uh, he offers a full international warranty, along with $25 flat rate shipping worldwide. And uh, to, to make that offer even sweeter, pump in the code Noob Spiro at checkout and save another 20 bucks. Penetratorfins.com. Support the Noob Spiro podcast by shopping with our sponsor. I wanted to share awesome experiences that you can have when you are in the water. And that's why I started spearfishing. I just clamped down on the reel and got drugged down to about 50 feet. And I'd never had a battle like that before in my life. So when you're learning where to hunt and find fish, they're the hot spots. It's where fish want to be. Don't overcomplicate your gear. Don't go diving dressed up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started off in stubbies with a bloody belt with a pig knife on it. And they've seen this big fin break the surface, roll into the water, look down. Here's this nice, big, great white. Oh. <laughs> Once your face hits the water and you feel relaxed, and all the other stresses of life seem to disappear. It's a whole new world and it's mysterious, it's magical. Beats the shit out of knitting anyway. Oh yeah. G'day guys, welcome to today's 101 Dive Buddy Protocol episode. Joining Turbo and I here in the studio, which is actually on the back deck of Turbo's house with a dog and its bed and we are just amusing ourselves reading our own blog. But thanks for joining us. This comes from an article Turbo recently wrote and uh, lots of sentiment will come through from Ted Hardy's uh, recent interview where he gave some uh, awesome sort of bulletproof buddy protocol. So we'll go over several of those tips. So Turbo, where did your inspiration for the Dive Buddy Protocol article come from? Yeah, mate, a couple of places. So number one, we're losing too many of our fellow divers out there, which is a great shame. Um, so that's the first thing. We don't want to lose any more of our mates and uh and also recognizing that our own dive crew is really putting themselves at risk and not following good dive buddy protocol and uh and i think we had a conversation a while back we sort of came to the conclusion that it's only a matter of time before we haven't we have an incident so i thought i'd uh yeah just put pen to paper and um and put it out there and if someone if someone reads it and they change their behavior well then yeah it's a good thing yeah cool all right so the first point you come up with was one up one down and um you know simon Tripp said it early on in uh you know one of our very first interviews he said uh your your only piece of true safety equipment when you're in the ocean is your dive buddy and you know we've heard you know multiple guests now share personal stories of blackouts and personal stories of their buddies blackouts so one up one down is a extremely easy to it sounds very easy to follow however sometimes it's quite difficult and ted laid out some awesome kind of points in his interview about how to make sure you stick to one up one down turbo can you sort of run through that yeah so one up one down is pretty basic um so when a diver leaves the surface um and heads to the bottom to you know stalk their prey or whatever um the other diver uh the buddy stays on the surface and watches them as best they can um and basically watches them throughout their whole dive and then when they return to the surface the buddy basically stays on the surface and keeps fairly close to them and um and makes sure that they don't black out on the way back to the surface so basically when the diver is returning to the surface um and they're about to suffer shallow water blackout they'll lose um, a lot of their uh, motor control and they'll start become uncoordinated 
and and it maybe even let some bubbles go. So they the di- the buddy then knows that their their diver's in trouble and they'll go into a rescue. All right, cool. And Ted sort of said um, one of the things he brought over from scuba diving into free diving was uh, when you buddy up with a partner, clarify on the boat before you even get in the water. Who is the leader at the start and who is the follower? And whoever's leading, the other guy just follows or the other girl just follows. And, you know, you swap that role over during the dive, but you agree on that. So that way the leader goes in the direction where both buddies go and the follower just follows along. And it's pretty easy. One up, one down. Nice and easy to follow. I know that when we are diving in deeper conditions um, in our crew, when we are behaving ourselves um, we'll often follow a two up, one down, and that's to, it's it's helpful because it it makes you stick to a double surface time protocol at the very least, and uh, and you've also got two people on hand should the need come for a rescue. So, yeah. All right, Turbo. Next point. Okay, so our next point uh, that I made was uh, not to rush your buddy. So one of the most important things, one of the great things about buddy diving basically is your surface interval. So your surface interval is the time that you take on the surface to go through your breathing protocol. So you're, uh, say you're giving yourself two or three minutes to breathe up. So you're breathing up, you're calming yourself down, getting ready for your dive, and then you go into your, your final breathe up and your duck dive. So what's really important as a buddy, a good buddy, when that person's breathing up is to not rush them, no matter what fish is around, is just to stay calm, stay with them, let them breathe up, let them, and keep an eye out for things like sharks and whatever. And if you're a good buddy, it means that that your, your buddy that you're watching can relax more and they'll get more out of their diving. And uh, and if you're really strict about this and don't swim off on them and don't get tempted by, you know, a, a big mackerel cruising in, you know, a couple of metres below you, if you actually stay in turn, both of you will be more relaxed and you'll get more out of your diving. Awesome. Okay, good, good, good stuff. Guys, check out howtofreedive.com. If you're just starting spearfishing, then check out the 10 meter freediver. You can get started for free with this online course. It will teach you the fundamentals, the basics to get you down and spearfishing to 10 meters. That's 30 feet. And uh, it's a respectable depth when you're getting started and it can seem a little intimidating. So Pete helps iron out some of those learning curves, makes it a lot smoother for you. It's cheap and affordable course, really good high quality video teaching. And you can uh, get started for free, do do a few samples, check it out, see if you like it. If you do, uh, pump in the code NoobSpiro and you'll save 20% on that course cost. So head over to howtofreedive.com, check out the 10 meter freediver if you're just starting out spearfishing. All right, next point is don't dive out of turn. So it sort of echoes what you were just talking about. You've got to be able to trust your buddy to truly relax and enjoy it. And uh, this is a little bit of a shot at one of our buddies who's, oh, he's renowned for this. Now I'm going to leave his name out. But uh, this guy regularly, like you'll be breathing up on the surface, it's your turn to dive. Uh, you, you even know where there is a fish, but you just, you want to make sure you've had an adequate breathe up time. That way you've got, all the time you need in the world when you get down there you're not rushing things he will deliberately snake you go down and shoot your fish that's right underneath you even if he's just come up from a 15 or whatever meter dive if he notices that fish like you took him 50 feet with two breaths and he's going back down for it so he's he's not only is he stealing your fish and ruining your re- relaxation he's putting himself in danger as well and uh, but he's he's relentless for it this guy we've had uh We've had a few good um, stashes, I would say. Yeah. One memorable cod uh, a bit, or a groper it was about 17 or 18 kg or 45 pound or something like that. Um, it was uh, clearly underneath me. It was my turn to dive. I had lined this fish up. I knew exactly what I was going to do, what my approach was. And then I looked to the left and he is friggin' snaking me. And he's dived down. He hasn't even taken a good shot at the fish. He's hit it, but the shaft's pulled and the grope has buried itself in the cave and there's dust and crap going everywhere. So I've finished my breathe up, gone down and shot it again. 
and it's further wedged in this cave with my shaft in it as well. So he's gone down again uh, pr- after probably another inadequate breather and put another shaft in it. And, you know, this thing's prickly like just shafts sticking out of it everywhere by the time we get it out of this hole. We get it up to the surface and we have a good couple of minute argument about whose fish it actually is. So yeah, so don't dive out of turn. Stick to stick to the, r- the rhythm and let your buddy relax and he will return serve for you. And if he doesn't, give him a friggin' talking to him. Put him onto the Noob Spiro podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's the next uh, tip, Turbo? Yeah, so the next tip is all about surface protocol. So <clears throat> when that diver returns to the surface, uh, it's good to have a bit of a protocol there to run through so that you know that uh, your buddy is in good shape. So basically, shallow water blackout can even occur after the diver has taken their first breaths Um once, once they reach the surface. So what we like to do is a thing called hook breaths. So when we get to the surface, we take a shallower breath and we bite down and we clinch and that, uh, that heightens blood pressure and forces the oxygen into the bloodstream. Now this is really, really important. And this is, if, if, if you are on the edge, this, and, and this becomes automatic, this can save you from blacking out. So it's really, really important, and it's something that not a lot of people do and not a lot of people know about, but it's something that's taught in uh, good uh, free diving classes. So very, very important. Now, that's good for the returning diver. Now, the buddy on the surface should be watching this person the whole time, make sure they get through their hook breaths, breathe up, and they're safe. Because if they're not and they pass out and you're not there, they can look fine, and the next minute they're falling back through the water column. So it's super duper important. Now, the other thing that is important are some hand signals, some gestures. Now, look, it doesn't have to be all the scuba diving stuff. As long as you and your buddy are clear as to what your signals mean to each other, that's the most important thing. Good communication. Yeah, look, I'm going to go back to Ted Hardy's interview and Andrew Concosis as well from Nautilus. He's a freediving instructor as well. And they both sort of talked about the fact that you can feel fine and you don't even know it, but you're right on the edge of a blackout or a samba. And, um, you know, so waiting around 30 seconds to make sure your buddy's all good and he's recovered, he's, you know, he's, he's in good shape is, is, is an adequate or, or a minimum probably adequate surface time to check on your buddy. So make sure you do that. Follow some surface protocols. You get into a rhythm and a routine with a good dive crew. And this is why some guys don't like diving outside of their peer groups because they establish these ways of doing things and, Everyone sort of uh, feels safe and they relax more and they enjoy their diving. They don't have to go over the same practices over and over. So if every single spear fisherman or spear fisher woman raises their practice and just follows some standardized safe diving practices, everyone will be able to relax more. We'll all be able to dive in different boats and enjoy ourselves a hell of a lot more and we'll have less people dying. So yeah. For sure, follow some service protocols. 30 seconds is a good rule of thumb, but yeah, establish that with your buddy so you know between you what you're doing. Guys, 99 tips to get better at spearfishing. Have you got hold of a copy yet? I know I have. I love it. And Turbo's mum has too. She said in her review, (laughs) actionable information to improve my spearfishing. I never could have started without this book. Thank you, Shrek and Turbo. You're my heroes. God, thanks, Mum. Gosh, she's <laughs> always 99, in my corner. 99 tips to get better at spearfishing, available on Amazon.com. Uh, next point, stay close. Um, again, we went over this uh, in a few interviews, and we, we talked about staying close to your buddy. I'll let Turbo go over it a bit more. Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. doesn't need too much explanation. Basically, if you... <laughs> If you're not if you're not there with your buddy, within arm's reach when they return to the surface, well then you're not really there for them. I mean, it, when somebody blacks out or whatever, they start falling through the water column and you're 50 yards away. Chances are you may not make it to them. Now, a rescue is so much easier on the surface or a couple of meters from the surface than it is at 10 meters. So it's super important to actually do your job as a buddy and be there on the surface when they return. Right, last point, rescue and recovery. Now, shallow water blackouts, like Turbo just sort of said, 
the deeper you are, the harder they are. And even if you think you're a confident waterman, you've got good fitness and your buddy is not 120 kilos like I am, you still need to practice some drills. And uh, it's, it's funny, like just doing it three or four times, you get all your muscle memory back, you're coordinated, practiced, everything just seems to go off a lot smoother once you have just had a few drills. Um, again, on a good freediving course, uh, you will drill good rescues over and over again. It's one of the most valuable takeaways you'll get from a course. However, you know, most of us fall out of practice and a lot of guys are too tight to um, invest in themselves and doing a freediving course. So even if you don't do a freediving course, like within your uh, circle of mates, I would really strongly encourage you to have a crack at conducting a rescue. You'll be surprised at how hard it is, particularly the first couple of times when you're sort of not in the rhythm. And you, you need to drill it at some stage and have probably some sort of refresher training. So if for nothing else, that's a good reason to do a freediving course. Turbo, anything else? Yeah, just on recovery, if you're not going to do a course and learn how to do it the right way, um, I think there's a couple of important things to keep in mind when you are recovering. One is to get rid of the gun try and get that out of their hands in a way because it's just, it's dangerous and, and they, they'll be flopping around and and stuff like that. The second thing too is to get them to the surface, you need your fins to be clear of their own body. So that means that in relation to you, their body needs to be above you because you need those fins to push, push you and them up through the water column. And once you're on the surface, it is quite important to keep the uh, airways above the water line it goes without saying. And from there, it's it's gentle tapping on the cheeks, talking to them, saying their name and blowing air across their nose, mouth and eyes. So that, that's that's really, really important. And uh, and get and get your body over there as quick as you can, you know. Get them out of the water. Yeah, cool. Look, if you guys want some more information, uh, our interview with Andrew Kinkosis, a freediving instructor from Nautilus Spearfishing in Florida, or in Miami in particular, he runs us through in his veteran's vault some more sort of a practical walkthrough of a rescue drill, what that looks like. Uh, other, other good... Um, We'll link in a couple of videos for the USFA uh, rescue. You can just watch one conducted in real life there. And uh, if you've been listening to the New Spiro podcast for a while, you would have heard a few stories of blackouts now. So you can see why we wanted to do a 101 buddy protocol. So awesome, Turbo. It's a great article, buddy. Yeah, no, thanks for listening, guys. I hope you can put some of these ideas into practice. And, uh, yeah, stay safe. Guys, we are proud to announce that we now have a code for you guys when purchasing a set of Penetrator freediving fins from penetratorfins.com. These are the best fins going. We love them. Super reactive. They get a great curve, great channels, and they last forever. We've been using them now for years. I've flogged the hell out of mine. I've had them in wrecks and the rocks, the whole lot. Cannot kill them. I even saw the rocking chair at the back of the house on one of the blades the other day and it was someone was sitting on it and I got him to get off and it was the blade was still good. I couldn't believe it. But anyways, so we've got a code for you. It's Noob Spiro and chuck that in at checkout when you're shopping online at penetratorfins.com and you will save yourself $20. That's Noob Spiro at checkout. So get online and take advantage of that. Not to mention, I almost forgot that you get $25 international flat rate shipping. So take advantage, advantage of the code. The great shipping cost, get one of the best fins on the planet on your feet and get out there and shoot more fish. Guys, if you're on the hunt for some new equipment, check out Adreno Spearfishing Supplies at spearfishing.com.au. They have a huge range of gear. They've got great prices. And if you use the code NoobSpiro at checkout, you'll save yourself $20 on all purchases over 200. So check them out at spearfishing.com.au and use the code NoobSpiro at checkout. Thanks for listening today, guys. Look, if you are seriously interested in becoming better at spearfishing, then go over to amazon.com, get your hands on an ebook that Turbo and I have written. Yeah, that's right, guys. We have put pen to paper and we've come up with 99 tips to get better at spearfishing. That's right. Head over to amazon.com and leave us a review because... The only people to review the book so far were Levi's mum and my mum. So 99 tips to get better at spearfishing. Thank you. Thanks to our mums too, our two favourite ladies. Yeah, thanks for listening today, guys. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>